working uh, at Via Lab. So uh, I've uh, I was in, in in at Via Lab as an intern uh, last uh, last year and got hired in September as a project manager regarding uh, product development in Via Lab. And, uh, and yeah, Via Lab. Uh, I mean, we, we, maybe we can uh, go on with the next slide or, already. Um, so for those who don't know us, who know maybe Loom a little bit more, um, Vialab is um, uh, is um, has an activity in the field of pitch and emotions. Uh, the core of our activity is um, uh, laboratory equipment for uh, bitumen emotions, bitumen uh, soils even. Uh, we also have uh, training uh, courses and uh, we recently uh, we have recently added uh, an industrial uh, sector to our to our activity by uh, including Emil Bitum uh, in our um, in our company. Um, so we now have the the possibility to uh, deliver emulsion production plants at uh, an industrial scale. Uh, and this technology is based on the atomic mill. Um, Vialab is. Um, uh, has um, 11 collaborators, uh, people working there uh, in, in, in Vialab that has like a, a position of uh, expertise in the field of bitumen emulsions. Uh, and uh, for with the integration, with the addition of this industrial sector to our activity, we now have like a, a global range of services from the lab to the uh, industrial scale. Uh, through the um, the training sessions, training that is key uh, in our field uh, to to make sure that the the knowledge about bitumen emulsions get gets passed on to uh, the next generation and that doesn't get lost. And, and um, to do that, that's why we collaborate with Loom because we strongly believe that uh, we can uh, facilitate uh, and um, give access. Uh, to knowledge very, very easily and precise knowledge about your bitumen emotions. Yeah, thank you so much, Antonin. That's a very pleased and very nice introduction for myself and for our company, Loom, uh, based in Berlin, founded in 1994 in the university campus of Humboldt, located in uh, Berlin, Germany. As of today, we have reached a size of close by 50 people, different subsidiary to serve people directly um, in US, China, Japan, and France, as well for Germany, and we have distributors as well around the world. <clears throat> we are manufacturer, designer, and uh, uh, sellers of instrumentation from our own developments and today we will specifically talk about the way to characterize bitumen emulsion and as Antonin told at Loom we have knowledge about how to characterize but Vialab is uh, increasing the, this with the knowledge of producing and um, improve and also the applications of bitumen emulsions. Yeah, so for those who are more familiar with Loom and not familiar with us and Bitumen Emotions, just a quick introduction to what Bitumen Emotions are all about. Um, so when we talk about Bitumen Emotions, we talk about cold asphalt pavements uh, that uh, are most uh, loosely used for, uh, like, they have different applications. Um, uh, new, inf new infrastructures, they allow... Um, they're allowed to save material. They're allowed to save energy uh, without the, the need to heat the, the aggregates. And they also provide more security for the people on site, which is key. Um, most of the bitumen emotions today are used for maintenance, maintenance and um, uh, interfaces and soil stabilization. Um, for maintenance, they, uh, they allow to uh, to have a low cost application, uh, to extend the life cycles of the materials in the pavements. So not to have, um, not to have, uh, to, 
uh, rebuilt a new pavement, like after 15 or 20 years, let's say, uh, and they, uh, they, um, they give more security for the users. Uh, and because of this diversity of applications, um, people need to have a uh, good knowledge and quality knowledge about their uh, emotions and this is a, a real challenge and uh, here we'll see how we can give you access to more quality knowledge about your emotions first we have to mm -hmm. create the emotions and uh, for that Lab has developed um atomix which is the brand name for um uh, a pilot, and uh, the idea is to produce a lot of emulsions in different uh, composition, and we will show you today the case study from a client having issues and uh, looking for mm -hmm. solution regarding its formulation and uh stability and decantation yeah. so Antonin made the job that <laughs> so um so the the basis of this uh, webinar is a, a case study as Sylvain said uh we've had a we, we, we've had a client that uh, was uh, facing problems uh, with his emulsion with his uh slurry seal emulsion uh so made of 69 percent bitumen uh, bitumen that was uh, 70, 100 grade, um, uh, and uh, he was using a, a, a defined emulsifier that we're not going to mention here. Uh, so this client uh, was facing stability issues, and uh, he went towards us, and uh, after a diagnosis from our side, uh, we have identified three parameters that uh, needed to be optimized. These parameters are the production conditions, uh, the, emuls the emulsifier content, as well as the, the storage conditions and the transport overall. And um, to, to help this client, uh, we made up a, a protocol uh, that was uh, that consisted uh, in, in produ producing four different emulsions uh, of 69% bitumen. Uh, so those four emulsions, uh, they had one uh, different parameter. Um, the emulsifier content was different. It was ranging from 0.16%, which is a, a rather low concentration, uh, to 0.35%, uh, which is a rather high concentration, very high. Uh, but that was uh, on purpose so that we could see uh, a plateau, uh, a no limit limitation to the uh, behaviors we uh, we would uh, an anal uh, analyze. So um, the bitumen was hidden uh, at 140 degrees, and uh, emulsions were produced one after the other with the uh, Atmo Agilis pilot based on the atomic smell. Um, here is a short video to, uh, to, um, introduce you to the, uh, simplified pilot at Agilis that we have here at Viara. Um, so the whole purpose of this pilot is to, uh, produce emulsions very quickly. Uh, you can produce a one liter samples with, with those pilots. You can produce like, uh, 10 in a row within a day, uh, and, um, and uh, it allows you to uh, check the quality of the bitumen. Maybe Sylvain, you can play the video. Um, uh, it allows you to check the quality of your bitumen and to formulate your emulsions very quickly. So you have the, the bowl uh, in which the, um, the aqueous phase uh, is uh, recycling. And then um, the, the people in the lab, they inject bitumen uh that is heating um they add it very slowly and within like three four minutes you have produced a one liter sample of emulsion that you can extract uh just like this so yeah you can produce as i said you can produce 10 of them in a row and uh with a different 
par par parameter every time and uh, very efficiently. It looks very, uh, I mean, the dimensions of this pilot are very, very low. Uh, it's a bench instrument you can put directly into the table and you don't need any specific condition to, to install it. Uh, the installation is really basic. You can just put it on the table. That's it. Uh, you just have to make sure that you have like air, everything that you need to clean everything. Uh, cause you know what it is when you work with bitumen, you have to care about the cleaning first of all, like, uh, this is the first thing, first thing you think about. Um, but yeah, it's very, very versatile and that's why it's called Agilis. Agilis, yeah, means you can <clears throat> move the device, travel with the device, adapt to the real, uh, condition on site and make emissions directly with the material you are. Yeah, it seems very efficient. So, as Antonin told, you can create small volumes of bitumen emulsions, but it's good to create. It's even better to test, control, and manage the physical characterization of this emulsion. And typically, when you speak about bitumen emulsion, you have some standard testing and one of them is uh, settling tendency typically you put half half of a liter into a glass cylinder and you wait you wait seven days and as much emulsion you have formulated into your lab as much uh, glass cylinder you have into your um, shelf into your storage so that takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of resources. Just for one test, you have to wait seven days. Temperature conditions are not optimal, let's say. And yeah, the quantification of this is made by high. So setting tendency, we will try to offer you today a new way to uh, accelerate it using the Lumisizer. Lumisizer is a loom instrument. Sizer means that you can make sizing and you see into the bottom left part granulometry. So it's a French wording. It's more precise to sell to tell uh, particle sizing and particle sizing of your bitumen emulsions. You can yeah. have into the same device. It's also benchtop. It's also a device. It's a classic centrifuge with inside photometer and we will see that later but the idea is to have a multi sampling so in the previous slide you generated a lot of emulsions different ones using the agilis pilot and then you have to select the best one so to select the best one we have to define criteria and we have to uh, measure precisely and efficiently and for that the high accuracy and high efficiency of uh, testing you can get with a Lumisizer. Yeah, sorry for the um, sales uh, speed, but uh, I have to sell to, to live. So my idea is to make it good and uh, that everybody finds a solution for his challenges. So what is a Lumisizer? A Lumisizer, as I told you, is a centrifuge, but not a simple centrifuge. It's an analytical centrifuge. If I just stop the video, you see 12 tubes. This is small cuvette, small optical cuvettes when you directly pour 400 microliters of your bitumen emulsions. Those ones are uh, different colors. It's just for animation. But in the, in the world of bitumen, it's classically white if you use latex or mm -hmm. a dark shadow if uh, you use bitumen or petroleum based. We might want to have like a blue emulsion in the future. We never know. Yeah, or green. Maybe. Every, every, everything green or blue is a very tendency. So <laughs> maybe you have to add some colorizing agent inside. Mm. So. Emulsions in, in tubes. You are ready. You just pour the, the cuvette, put into the rotor. 
the centrifuge controls temperature, controls rotation, and here is the technology. The technology, uh, I'll try to stop when it's flashing. Yeah, yeah, it's flashing. And you see during the rotation, there is um, an area where a light is emitted. And this light is emitted and it's collected in synchronization with the um, passage of a tube. It means when the tubes arrive here, it's measured in terms of optical density. Optical means density means the ability to stop the light and the ability for photons to go through. And those photons are uh, collected in a camera on top of the sample. So here you see 12 samples. One detector is enough because they are moving and they are measured when they pass this area. This allows you to collect settling profiles. We will discuss that later in details that it's easier for you to identify what is what, but from that you get here you have an example of uh, what is typically seen for a settling test, uh, a settling tendency test uh, in a bituminum emulsion. Classically, you get that. So the tube is horizontally placed onto the rotor. Here you have a graduation on the scale from 100, let's say 100 and 130. It's in millimeter. This belongs to the distance of rotation. So you can imagine here, you have the center of the uh, rotor, means zero millimeter, and the tube displaced horizontally and measured from position 100, 110, let's say, and 130. So here, in this area, you have a sensitivity in each one detector every 15 microns or 40 microns, depending on the instrument you, you purchase from us. And uh, from that, we can measure precisely the movement of the supernatant interface. You see here, after a second, certain time, after two, three, four, five, six, seven measurements, then the interface has moved from uh, 105 to 112 millimeters. So it means here you have, uh, help me Antonin, a, yeah, eight millimeter mm -hmm. of uh, supernatant on top of your sample. And you do that live when it's turning on all of your 12 samples. Means if you want to know the supernatant with time, mm -hmm. the decantation, the settling tendency, we can get that directly in with numbers and quantify to compare. So referring this to is, yeah. yeah. So, so so just to mention, this is huge, like in comparison to uh the the glass, uh the glass separation tendency that we have in the lab. Uh here you only get like two uh two values uh, uh seven days after the production, and that's it. You just compare a binder content. And we here with the Lumisizer, you get uh, the data about the the kinetic of the of the separation reaction during the whole thing, and you have uh, accurate data. You have uh, data uh, about you, the whole length of your sample, not just the the top and b bottom fractions. Uh, and on top of that, you can do uh, particle sizing and. Yeah, within a day after production. So yeah, this is for the next chapter. Uh, just one comment for our participants. Don't be shy. Please write questions into the chat. Uh, we will be happy to answer you. We can even stop during the, t the talk to be more precise in the slide if you want to uh, directly live ask some questions. Don't be shy. Thank you. Uh, so referring to our case study. The customer has produced emulsion and he knows there are uh, issues with the settling tendency. So how to quantify? It's We have an experimental plan, very simple. We will test different formula compared to the reference recipe in terms of water phase separation. And when I tell water, I, would, I just 
to say the aqueous phase, which is released on top. How we will accelerate that? We will accelerate that using analytical centrifuge, and we will compare the kinetics of separation to um, have an idea how efficient are the new formula, are the new tensile, are the new percentage of uh, stabilizing agents in to answer directly the question of the customer, is it better or worse than or of the same efficiency than the reference sample? Instrument as a temperature control, so we can make that at 25, at 60, at 10, at 4 degrees. So you can make cold tests for water release and settling tendency, even um, hot storage condition like 60 degree and have the settling tendency at different temperature, which is also of interest. How you do, you just simply put the emulsions, the bitumen emulsion, which is very liquid, easy to fill, directly into the cuvette, 400 microliters. And uh, Antonin will give you the, the presenter mode for this slide. I am sure you will be more um, efficient <laughs> well, compared to me. Well, uh, here on top, you can see a, a cell that, with a bitumen that has separated. And as you can see, um, you know, that, that's maybe what's the, um, difficult to understand at the beginning. But uh, where you have no signal on your chart, that means you have bitumen. That means the light cannot go through. Uh, and where your curves are very high, that means the light can go through. And that means uh, you have uh, water that has uh, separated from your, your sample. And here, uh, you can even have a sneak peek on the bitumen content. Uh, if you already know the bitumen content of your emulsion, you can uh, assess how much water there is still in your sample after separation. You can evaluate the, the purity of the, the water that has separated. So you have access to loads of different information on your sample. Um, and, uh, this is, this is key and the, the information is, you know, this, this is repeatable, uh, the, the conditions, uh, will be the same. Uh, you can do that for 12 different samples. And so it's very, it's very comfortable to be able to do that in the lab. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if we go back to the slide, um, we, we have different information, um, we are referring to an emulsion, which is called C69. And 69 refers to the percentage of bitumen directly into the emulsion. But the idea is, for formulator, the topic is, are there some water um, which diffuse into the bitumen, uh, kept and um, stick to the bitumen? Can you separate efficiently the pure water and pure aqueous phase from the bitumen, how fast and how good is the separation means if half of your bitumen stay into the aqueous phase, this is not good for applications. And if you are water incorporated by osmosis or other phenomenon like that into your bitumen, then it's not good as well. And um, you are wasting bitumen, you are wasting resources. And those information you can get from the turbidity of this part, from the larger, uh, from the width of this area compared to this one. And you have the, the full kinetics in terms of percentage of release with the time, which helps you to uh, assess that. You see, if we go to this curve, we reach at the end, maybe 30, 33% of separation. And we expect uh, 69, so we expect 30, 31. So mean at the very end of this separation, we mostly separate completely the bitumen from the oil, from the water. Mm. Yeah, I will give you back. Thank you, Ordena. Okay. So, uh, for this, uh, analysis in particular, uh, the rotation, like, uh, 
the, the centrific centrification was at uh, two thousand three hundred times the the um, Earth's attraction, um, and uh, like we're not going to analyze those curves in detail. But it's just to 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 tell you that uh, here the analysis was more than one hour long. And in our case, in the case of our client that was uh, trying to formulate uh, emulsions uh, for slurry seals, there were six, uh, 69 percent bitumen. So th these emulsions are not made to be stored like for months. Um, so we don't need to uh, to care about the, the 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 values at the end, like after one hour of centrifugation or something. Um, what's more. Uh, interesting for us is to compare the the values reached after 25 minutes uh, of centrifugation because that's where our curves differ the most and uh, that's you know you can that way uh, try to simulate um, what your emotions go through uh, what your emotions go through after uh, several weeks of uh, of storage and um, and uh, and yeah, uh, here specifically it was done at twenty degrees. Um, and yeah, as I said, twenty five minutes. So after that, we we kind of zoom in on those curves to get the values, and then we can compare. And we get a we get a value. We cannot get a value of time directly. Uh, the client has to have a reference, uh, an internal reference. Uh, maybe let's say an emotion. For which he knows exactly the the storage life, let's say, uh, and with the, with his internal reference, he can also do a lumisizer analysis, and then compare uh, compare those curves to the curve of his reference. And that that way, he can evaluate, estimate the the storage life. So, the the first result that we get from uh, those uh, values at 25 minutes for centrifugation uh, with an RCA of 2300 at 20 degrees is that uh, uh, you, like um, is the the curve uh, displaying on your screen and uh, maybe you can display the curve Sylvan thank you very much um, we can see uh, um, uh, separate separation index slowly decreasing and reaching a plateau an, an ultimate limit uh, after uh, a concentration of uh, emulsifier of uh, 0 0.22 percent so first with uh, 0 0.16 and 0 0.18 we get similar values and then they they decrease and at 1.22 percent uh, we kind of reach a plateau and at 0 0.35 we can see like the the exact same values. So here, if our clients only wanted to optimize the the stability parameter of his emulsion, he would go for zero point twenty two because that way he can get uh, an optimal stable stabilization uh, with the less emulsifier content. So that would be a good compromise. But as we all know. Um, and bitumen emulsions are you have to make compromises okay so in in our field uh emulsifier content is uh, directly related to the breaking index so the more emulsifier you put in your emulsion the higher your breaking index is going to be and uh, in that case with an emulsion of 3.1 uh, 3.2 percent emulsifier uh with um the the emulsion 3.2 with um 0 0.22 percent of emulsifier the breaking index was uh higher than 110 which is the limit to to be able to say that your emulsion is uh rapid setting you might have seen two uh emulsions and uh, with um 0 0.22 percent emulsifier the 3.1 and a 3.2 i will talk about them later uh this is a, a a result that comes after but here yeah uh so the client has to make a, a compromise between the breaking index and the emulsifier content if, if for the the client the the breaking index is more important he might go 
for uh, um, emulsifier contents of 1.18, which is satisfactory, or maybe you could compromise between 0.18 and 0.22. Just to make a, a break into uh, the discussion on that, the break-in index is used to rank the um, efficiency of the bitumen emissions to, to settle if it's fast or long uh, settling and uh, the, break, the breaking index helps you to rank um, the grade of the emulsions. So uh, it's a compromise. If you add too much emulsifier, then here you see that the grade is changing. So um, mm -hmm. in practice, and it's not what we are doing here a practical case. We are not doing here theory. So we have to make a choice with different parameters. And here the good choice should be uh, the, the compromise from the breaking index and the emulsifier content. Yeah. Um, next up, we've conducted the same experiment at 60 degrees. And we see the same plateau behavior uh, with uh, great, uh, like a high separation index for 0.16%, and then a separation index that slowly decreases to reach a plateau. And um, and what's interesting about this uh, anal analysis at 60 degrees is that if you go uh, on to the next slide, uh, we can compare the the values between 20 degrees and 60 degrees. Uh, like as storage conditions. And uh, as we can see, if you just release like the little little circle thing, yeah. Um, like for some for some formulations, uh, it is an option to store your emulsion at a temperature that is higher than room temperature, uh, here typically 60 degrees. Uh, for example, uh, the 0.18%, um emulsion uh would be way more stable with a storage temperature of 60 degrees rather than uh, 20 percent uh, rather than 20 degrees so here uh maybe our, our client uh doesn't want to increase his uh, breaking index he wants to keep a low emulsifier content but yeah if he wants that he will need to heat his emulsion during the storage to make sure that the, his, sta his emulsion is as stable as possible. If he's ready to make a compromise with his Reckon index, he might go for 0.22 or an intermediate concentration uh, to be able to store the emulsion at room temperature and save energy. So here, it's we give all this data to our client and he needs to make a choice uh for uh an emulsifier content uh, and so for, for, yeah. for, to get those data uh, what the term in english for stockability um, stockability store storability storability yeah so the storability temperature the um, settling tendency and we will see later on the particle sizing it's all from the lumisizer if you want to make the breaking index, then you need the sound and the, the funnel from uh, via lab. But mm -hmm. this is in in very short um, apparatus, in, in very short uh, instruments. You can have the full range of uh, data needed to adapt, depending what processing you have on site, what type of storage opportunity you have then you can select the correct emulsions to mm -hmm. master and to deal with the um, with the problem you may face with. We still have uh, loads of results to to display, but all this data was produced within a day. So, yeah. um, and here, uh, the distinction between the, the two emulsions with 0.22% uh, emulsifier, the 3.1 and the 3.2 is, uh, about the production conditions. That was one parameter that we wanted to optimize. Uh, the 3.1 emulsion 
uh, for the 3.1 emulsion, the bitumen was heated at 130 degrees, which is voluntarily a low temperature uh, compared to the optimal temperature in our case, which was 140 degrees. Because with this temperature, the bitumen had a viscosity of around 200 uh, milli pascal uh, times second uh, or 200 centipoise. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a, yeah, a, a grade 70, 100 uh, bitumen. And uh, and you will see that this has a huge uh, impact on the quality of the emulsion, obviously. Like it, it might sound obvious uh, to control the, the, the temperature of your bit, bitumen, but we know that sometimes on site, uh, people might want to, uh, especially in those times, save energy, save uh, save time. And uh, the thing is that bitumen viscosity and temperature is key, and you cannot like play around with this parameter. Yeah, and for, for that, I'm sorry, I forgot to put the, the, the picture of your product for this slide compared to the French session. So, yeah. but yeah, uh, Vialab is also offering some uh, heaters with um, a probe to control the temperature in heart, I mean, uh, inside of the bitumen to control and to heat without loss of energy and uh, mm -hmm. to master and to control the, the heating of the bitumen. Yeah. So here you too can get that from the Yeah. Um, so in terms of stability, uh, when we compare those two emulsions with the centrifugation at 20 degrees, um, we do not see that big of a difference. Uh, this is the same chart that we've seen earlier, but this here we, we've highlighted the, the emulsions uh, 3.1 and 3.2. We do not see that big of a difference. But when it comes to the particle sizing, that's where it gets very interesting um, because uh, on the left, uh, you have the mean particle diameter, and you can see that the particle diameter of the 3.1 emulsion is, uh, of the 3.1 emulsion is way higher, uh, is around four micrometers in comparison to uh, the mean diameter of the second emulsion, which is around two 2.2. 2. Uh, and on the, on the right, you have the particle size distribution. And uh, here you can evaluate the dispersity, uh, polydispersity or monodispersity of your emulsion. Uh, and we will see the numerical values uh, on the next slide, but here you can already see that the yellow uh, chart is way, let's say, thinner, way um, uh, closer to the mean value uh, than the, the purple chart. And all those parameters have effect uh, have an effect on the the overall uh, surface area that is uh, developed by the bitumen within the emulsion so it has an effect on the breaking behavior uh, it has an effect on the um, uh, cohesion increase once the the emulsion uh, is broken on the on the surface and most importantly it is huge to control the viscosity of the emulsion and this parameter is very important mostly for our clients that is trying to formulate a slurry seal emulsion at 69 percent bitumen uh, in that case you want to control the viscosity of your emulsion and those parameters are are directly linked with the viscosity yeah if i can just summarize if you increase the temperature by a factor by 10 degrees means less than than 10 percent error or 10% change, then you can reduce the size by a factor of two into the median and to reduce the span, reduce the polydispersity as well from maybe a factor of two. And it's super important to master the, the particle sizing. A, a bitumen emulsion is made uh, from the mixture of uh, two liquids, but we consider here the bitumen as a particle because it's, it's settling. And um, how we measure particle size, we use the velocity settling, the settling velocity of the particles uh, of the bitumen into the emulsion. 
and using Stokes' equation, we get back to the particle sizing, to the full distribution, and then you get the distribution curves like, like it said here. Yeah, if we consider that the particles are spherical. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's very important to master the temperature because you see a huge difference. And so here you have the, um, I don't know how you say that in English, but you have the cumulative cumulative yeah, uh, distributions. Um, so yeah, uh, the the yeah the cumul cumulative sizes of the particles. So here at fifty percent, you have the the mean diameter. You you get uh, the same values as earlier for the the three point one and three point two emulsions. And on the right hand side, you have the the uh, numerical values for the dispersity enver envergure. Mm -hmm. uh, here on the right is uh, yeah, uh, the span. Yes, and uh, is uh, a parameter for the. Uh, an in, an index for the dispersity and the epsilon that is right next to it is uh, the parameter that we use uh, in the field of bitumen emulsions. It's equal to uh, zero point five times the log of the uh, cumulative eighty four percent divided by the cumulative sixteen percent. And uh, here you can see that uh, bitumen. Uh, temperature has a huge impact, obviously, on the mean uh, diameter and on the dispersity. Uh, and uh, all this you get within seconds uh, and uh, right after the production of three emulsions very fast. And you, you get access to, you, you, with this data, you can build your own knowledge about your emulsions. And here, for example, we see that for uh, 0 0.35 percent emulsifiers, so the emulsions on the on the bottom, you have a mean uh, a mean diameter uh, that is higher than for the other emulsions. So here again, uh, it is necessary to optimize the emulsifier content of your emulsion. You don't want to put uh, you you want to put enough so that your emulsion is stable enough, but you don't want to put too much because otherwise you're going to deteriorate the performance and the behavior of, of your emulsion uh, on site and after the the pavement has been done. So, again. <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, coming back to the, the instrument, which is uh, in my background in the video, you, you can imagine you have um, 12 tubes. So, yeah, this is just one measurement. Measurements has, have been duplicated, and I don't know if you are familiar with particle sizing, but you see how close are the values and uh, how repeatable are the measurements. It's, uh, you know, I'm selling room till maybe 12 or 13 years now, and I'm still, I think this is all, always awesome, such reproducibility on the measurement for particle sizing. It's, it's an incredible uh, add-on for formulator and for the research part into the lab so mm. the same instrument settling tendency precise particle sizing and um yeah that helps you to choose the best solution for yeah in in the field of bitumen emulsions there are so much parameter that you have so much uh yeah so much parameters that you can optimize uh, and that can potentially have an influence on the the storage time and on the the behavior of your emulsion on site. That those uh, this equipment, so the the combination of the pilots and the the lumicizer is is very is very key to to go towards your your results very fast. So yeah, so the previous slide was just a a, a short uh, conclusion. Uh, including all the, the observations that we were, we were able to make. So again, uh, here regarding the stability of the emulsion uh, and on the saving on uh, emulsifier, 0 0.22 was the optimal parameter. However, if the client wants to save his, uh, his breaking index, he would want to go for an alternative between 0.18 or 0.22, or maybe he would want to go for 0.18% in, 
and store his emotion at 60 degrees. Uh, so he, here it's the, the second point uh, for some formulations. It, like you can identify the formulations for which uh, it would be interesting to store uh, at a higher temperature than uh, in comparison to room temperature. And uh, to finish off, uh, it is key to control the, the, the temperature of your bitumen because as you, as you were able to see, as you all know, uh, dispersity and particle uh, mean diameter, they all have a huge influence on both the repeatability, repeatability of your productions uh, and the repeatability of the, your uh, emotion behaviors, as well as the reliability of your emotions on site. Yeah, so this is just a conclusion. We are two minutes uh, behind schedule, so uh, we will go Oops. very quick from here. Um, I like this screen because it's a, a good um, summary of what we explained. No glass uh, tubes, no glass uh, beakers. Results within one and a half hour instead of seven days for settling tendency. Particle sizing, temperature control for measurements, repeat, repetition, multi-sampling analysis. So it's now time to go for the Q&A session. And uh, this is our uh, vision for the future into your lab to have both instruments side by side. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, to this is yeah. a, a key factor to, to adapt and to overcome issues that may happen mm -hmm. on site. Our our main goal with this collaboration is really to, because we all know what the tests uh, that, that uh, are done in our field to characterize the emotions, and some are very subjective. Some have a, a rather low repeatability. Uh, here you get access to fast data. You produce all your emotions within a day. You analyze them the same day. You you eliminate the uh, the parameters that could disturb your formulation campaign, and you get access to your own set of data to adapt your emotion to your need. So thank you so much for your attention. If you want to continue on this topic with us, you can contact Antonin and myself and yeah. also our colleagues in Berlin and uh, in uh, montfort sur in Brittany. So... Um, uh, improve the quality in the future. Welcome. Yeah, it will be welcome. Thank you so much, Antonin. I see you soon. And uh, all the best. Take care. Yep. Yeah. It was a pleasure to have you all here. And uh, yeah, till next time.